Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting and long overdue knife review slash knife overview to show you guys. This is the Kaiser Sheepdog Titanium. This particular variant is a medium-sized one, uh, sporting titanium scales, S35VN, no flipper tab, and an opening hole. I'm going to tell you guys right now, um, the Kaiser Sheepdog exists in many forms. There's XL ones that are much bigger than this. There's little ones that are smaller than this. There's the Vanguard series, which is like G10 or Micarta in, you know, some less premium steels for less money. And then they have these titanium variants and they got flipper ones and non-flipper ones. And they got, oh, there's so many different versions. I will link this knife right down below so you can check out all of the different variants. It's a very good knife. I have reviewed so many different versions of this. It's very recommendable, right? Um, but this one in particular kind of has it all. It's all, you know, kind of together in one ultimate sheepdog form. So I've got a lot to say, but then again, it should be pretty straightforward. Uh, I'll link this, make sure there's links down below so you guys check them all out. This uh, was loaned to me by the only Lucifer on Instagram. Please give him a follow. It's because of people like him that I'm able to bring you guys daily knife content. This will go back to him when I'm done. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me. Link for Patreon down below, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and get a measurement of this guy. This is the medium sized one. It's the most I think the, the best one, the best size for EDC. Uh, this guy's coming in at 7.75 inches overall with a 3.3 inch blade. Your cutting edge is coming in at about 2.85 inches. How about some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. So you can see here the blade gives this guy a lot of presence, but it's a little shorter. Right? I mean, it's, it's definitely shorter than the the Rat 1, um, but uh, it still definitely feels like a full-size knife. Just a couple more. How about up against the Spyderco Para 3? There we go. Definitely longer and bigger than the Para 3. And last but not least, the Benchmade Bug Out. Absolutely longer and definitely bigger than the Bug Out. How's the action? This is a frame lock and uh, it's a Kaiser. So the action is pretty good. Uh, I think that blade is helping it a bit, which is nice, right? The action is definitely smooth, but I think the best part is the opening hole, right? They make flipper versions of these and they're fine, right? The, I had the big XL flipper and it was kind of funny. In fact, I think they're making a titanium XL flipper, which is hilarious. But this this uh, opening hole variant is, you know, for the same reason that spider codes are easy to manipulate, this guy's very easy and very friendly to manipulate. There's also a nice large cut out there for, um, you know, gaining access to the lock. So whether you like to thumb flick your knives out you like to reverse flick them out. You like to do the spidey drop, right? Which is stupid, um, but you can do that if you want. Or you like to use, I mean, there's actually, you can see here there's a fuller that runs the length of the blade almost. You can use that to kick it out as well. It's just an easy knife to manipulate and I appreciate it. You know, if you're wearing gloves, just as easy, right? The only thing that would make it easier is if it were not an exposed frame lock, if it were like some sort of countersunk liner lock, but I don't want to complain too much because it's got a lot going for it here. Let's go ahead and do carry profile thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. You can see here it's really not all that thick and it's nicely contoured too. Length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. So we definitely have more presence in the pocket in a lot of areas. Uh, this is a pretty consistent height line, so it's not just as tall or slightly taller, honestly, than the Para 3 in, uh, you know, not just one area, but it's pretty consistently that tall. Right, so you're gonna notice in the pocket, I wouldn't say more, it's a different shape than like the PM2 and it's heavier because it's titanium, but it's not that far outside of that realm. Um, it's just, if you're used to carrying like the pair of three, this is definitely gonna feel bigger. Let's go ahead and measure blade stock thickness. I, that looks like 145 to 150 thousandths to me, but I'm almost always wrong. So yeah, see, there you go. I didn't, 133 is probably 135 thousandths. The calipers are probably just wrong there. Materials, S35VN, titanium. You do have some holes for weight reduction there that go all the way through. S35VN, why not 20CV? I don't know, why not S35VN? Well, because 20CV is better. 
Better? What do you mean better? You mean it has higher potential edge retention and it or more corrosion resistance? Yeah, but S35VN is tougher. It's also easier to maintain, which are two elements that many people consider uh, you know, more important. It just depends on what elements you like. A lot of people don't ask themselves that question. They just automatically throw 20 CV up on this pedestal with no meaning behind it. Keep in mind that we can definitely get knives under $100 in 20 CV, and there's not really that much more value in the base steel when we're talking about CPM 20 CV versus S35VN. Compositions are a multi-directional teeter-totter. There are different forms of balance. Like when you play an RPG and you've got different stats and intelligence and strength and dexterity. I never thought of it like that. That's literally how it is, right? So S35VN and 20CV have both been around for a long time. One is not necessarily better than the other. And personally, I prefer S35VN day to day over 20CV. It's easier to strop. It's easier to maintain. And all the other attributes just suit me better, right? But, you know, it's up to you, right? You can make that decision for yourself. I probably wouldn't have cared that much if it, if it were, like if it did come in 20 CV, I wouldn't have highlighted that. It's like some big important thing. Weight, probably pretty hefty, right? Probably pretty hefty. Yup, 5.43 ounces, which puts it way over the uh, ounce and inch thing. It's still probably relatively similar to the weight of your phone with the gigantic case on it. And some of you even have dingly danglies that you hang off of it. Like, what's your name from, I can't say that name because it might, yeah, S Word Creek. <laughs> what's your name that has the little dangly off the phone? Always cracks me up. Um, but uh, anyways, yeah, it's probably that, not that much heavier than your cell phone. So kind of do with that information what you will. It's still definitely, ratios are not perfect. The balance is pretty good. I mean, that blade is heavy enough that the balance honestly is right there like right behind the pivot, so it doesn't feel that heavy. That's why balance is so important, right? Um, so the the little, you know, milling, the, the weight reduction holes here, and the fact that the blade is big enough to balance the knife out makes it feel a lot, it feels a lot lighter than five and a half ounces, to be honest. I would have guessed something like four and a half ounces. That's how it feels in my mind, right? Let's go ahead and do a hardware check, get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. T8 is likely what the pivot is. T8 and no, uh, the lock bar insert screws are T6. Body screws though, much more important, are T8 as well. And then you have T6 for the pocket clip. So. Minimal hardware and the appropriate size and the appropriate location. You do not have to remove the pocket clip to disassemble the knife. So all of the disassembly or the, the more important heads um, are the right size and there's not very many of them. It's also a simple frame lock, pillar construction frame lock. So there's nothing keeping the average person from easily disassembling this knife and putting it back together properly, which is good. Thank you very much, Kaiser. Okay, have we done all of that, I think we have. Let's go ahead and move into the meat and potatoes here. The um, the thing that, ha that uh, ha the only thing that has ever held this design back has been the flipper tab. And those of you who just love the flipper version, that's fine, keep loving it. But this makes way more sense without a flipper. Ergonomically, it is super comfortable thanks to these nicely rounded, these contoured scales, it's really good. And then the pocket clip, which is milled, is flat and wide and rounded off and not, you know, intrusive on the hand, not uncomfortable. I mean, you could work with this thing for hours and still be fine. Plus, look at this beautiful area right here that is a full, like, go ahead, put your finger here, you're safe, you're not going to run it up on the blade because there's a clear, right? That's awesome. The only complaint that generally comes with this is, well, you're, you know, sacrificing meaningful cutting edge just to, you know, have an additional place for your finger, fine. Uh, re sacrifice a quarter inch of cutting edge, or, you know, gosh, even half an inch of cutting edge. Goodness me, what will I do without that half an inch of additional cutting edge, right? Now, instead of one, arguably two, maybe different positions that I can put my hand in, I can choke up up here and you can get into a more comfortable spot depending on what it is you are doing. I've always been somebody who will prefer 
that choil area. I mean, there's also an area right here that just kind of keeps the um, blade from, uh, or the material from dropping into this area. Now there's a little bit of a sharpening choil here, which is a pro and a con. Uh, pro, you have a sharpening choil, so that area does not get progressively uglier as time goes on. Uh, con, it will get hung up on, in that spot on material, right? Uh, as you're pressing down, but fine. Uh, generally, it's something that I can deal with. I love that we have this area up. This is so comfortable. It's ridiculous. The ergonomics on this thing are an A+. They're wonderful. To me, that is one of the most important elements when it comes to a knife that you are going to use. This is absolutely a knife that I would take out and use. Fortunately, it, you don't have to get the titanium one to get those ergonomic lines. They do make the Vanguard version of this. They have a variant that is no flipper and has a hole in the blade. I know a lot of you guys watching right now are sitting there flipping that exact knife going, yeah, uh, yeah, it's awesome, right? I mean, you don't necessarily have to take my word for it. I imagine if you're here, that's part of the deal. <laughs> but I mean, there's gonna be lots of people watching this video who will say, I have this knife and I use it and I like it a lot, right? Uh, and it's, the, the thing is, if you're going to use any pocket knife for an extended period of time, it needs to be comfortable. It needs to be comfortable. And this is absolutely a comfortable knife. There are no sharp edges anywhere. They took the, the, the designer, this comes from Sheepdog Knives, right? Um, this was not a, an original Kaiser design. But the designer took all of that into consideration, making a super comfortable knife. And it, it just is, it's wonderful. And I really appreciate it. We have a bead blasted finish on the titanium, which is gonna mark up pretty readily. I mean, you can see there, there's scratches, but oh well, I kind of think knives like, like a bead blast finish that's been marked up, it kind of looks cool, right? We have Kaiser's legendary tumbled finish, which is just beautiful. Um, there's a lot of uh, OEMs and, you know, just people who make knives out there that could take a note from Kaiser. It's, this is like the, the perfect tumbled finish. High reflectivity, right? And then we have a teeny tiny little grain structure, like all the little marks, right? But they're still there. And so the, this, this type of blade will look good for so long. <laughs> <laughs> you can use it and beat on it, right? And you're just gonna add additional teeny tiny scratches to it that should blend in pretty well, but you have that nice high reflectivity. It's just really good. It reminds me a lot of uh, the Chris Reeve um, tumbled finish. The blade looks epic. Sheep's foot blade. I think that's a, no, it's a sheep's foot blade, period. This is called the sheep dog. It's a sheep's foot blade. No. <laughs> <laughs> the sheep's foot blade is awesome. And this is one of the most utilitarian blade shapes. I like it. I like blades like day to day where the nose or the tip of the blade points down. Your draw cuts, you still have enough to puncture. It's not gonna be like a super, you know, if you're like, I just, I poke holes all day. That's what I do. Well, then this isn't gonna be the knife for you. That's a weird, what is your occupation would be my next question. But yeah, it'll still do that. And then you have this awesome uh, amount of, you know, meaningful belly. And it tapers down to a pretty reason. It's not a, it's not an ultra thin edge, but it's, you know, the nice thing is it's not a delicate edge either because I, I don't think I'd want this thing to be incredibly thin because I can see myself using this for, you know, not like, I'm not gonna pry anything, but I, you know, this is, this is the type of knife that I would use for some pretty heavy duty continuous cutting. So I appreciate that the blade is how it is. It's gonna readily pass through material. There's really nothing in the cutting path. I mean, yeah, we've got the fuller in the hole and some stuff's gonna get caught in the fuller every now and then. Just wipe it out, right? Uh, you should be pretty good. Continuous, right? If you're gonna do slicing, you're gonna do push cuts or just draw cuts or whatever. I mean, this is a nice day-to-day -day utilitarian blade shape that's capable of a lot of things. I prefer Sheep's foot and Warncliffe style blades over drop point blades day to day functionally. Aesthetically, yeah, a drop point still looks better in my opinion, but day to day functionally, this is, you know, there's a reason that utility blades are shaped this way or relatively this way, right? It's just better uh, in my opinion. I mean, it depends on what you're doing, obviously, but for the average Joe, yeah, I like this blade better. Uh, this is a Kaiser, so we have a whole bunch of stuff all over the blades. This is Kaiser, and then we have this, you know, I don't, I don't know if it's supposed to be like Blades of Grass, or if it's supposed to be like a, you know, like a, a, a Hadouken, <laughs> or, or what it is. I have no idea. Um, and then it's this S35VN KI4488A4. That's always great to have a big, long code, right? 
There's the, uh, I think it says Sheepdog Knives logo. I mean, we've seen that forever. And then CO1C would be really nice if we could just get Kaiser, the blade steel, and Sheepdog Knives, but we gotta have codes all over the place. As is the case with all Kaiser knives, these are made in China, but Kaiser is one of those manufacturers that is really making premium stuff. There's junky China knives and there's premium China knives and Kaiser definitely makes the premium stuff. And let's remember that um, you know all countries are capable of producing garbage and gold, right? <laughs> it's not like only one country makes gold. No, um, all countries make garbage and gold. It just depends on who the OEM is. So Kaiser does great work. I like the pivot collar. I wish they would do, more, like on the titanium ones, I wish you weren't like set to blue. I wish they would do different colors, right? If they do them in aluminum, you could get green, yellow, red, right? You gotta do, if you want red, you gotta go aluminum. You can't anodize titanium to, you know, like Crayola red. You're just not gonna get it. Um, but the blue looks good. Um, so no issues there. They've also, another thing I wanna point out, they have really knocked down the inside of that hole. Giggity. What's wrong with me? Um, so it's very comfortable to manipulate with your finger. There's no way around that, guys. There's no way. <laughs> what am I supposed to say, right? <laughs> Anyways, um, the, uh, the, the knife has no option for a lanyard. Oh, darn, right? I don't care. I'm sorry. If you like lanyards, there's no option here. Bummer. For the other 99.99999% of you watching who don't care, let's move on. There are two standoffs here. They look nice, right? The pocket clip, very generic, but it goes with the design. We have a nice continuously rising bill and some very good retention, smooth surface in and out of the pocket. This is no problem. We have a steel lock bar insert doubling as the over travel stop, which is great. We are locking up at, let's go ahead and kick it out once so we get a good all right, there we go. Uh, what is that, 40% 40, 40 or so? Um, stop pin is located right here. Typical stop pin with some nice shouldering. No blade play, up, down, left, or right. No lock stick, no pivot lash. Smooth bearing operation and a completely and totally centered blade. This is a very good knife. Um, and you know what? Honestly, this is one of my favorite. Uh, this is definitely Kaiser's best model. It does, like I said, you don't have to go with the titanium one, but specifically the medium sheepdog, this, this medium size right here, that is the, it's got the opening hole, um, and it does not have a flipper. That is their, that is the best knife that Kaiser has ever done. And I understand it's not an original design, but it is definitely their best knife. And it's one of my favorite knives. This knife comes in, this particular version comes in at $204, but you don't have to spend that much to enjoy this design. If you really like titanium and you really want this premium feel, then go for it. You're going to love it. You want to spend, I think it's actually a little bit less than half of that. You can do that and enjoy just as much in the form of a liner lock. I think it's micarta or G10 liner lock and what do they use? 154CM, 14C28N. I think they even used 4V at some point, which is pretty cool. Yeah, extremely recommendable, extremely recommendable if you are an enthusiast, collector, and most importantly, those of you who take your knives out and use them, you will find an enormous amount of joy with this, uh, with this model. So it's going to go in my favorite knives of all time playlist, and it's also going to go in my recommended knives playlist, which is not something that happens too often on this channel, right? Um, that's really cool. So long overdue. I think I can finally stop talking about the Sheepdog now. <laughs> if you type in Metal Complex and Sheepdog, you'll find a lot of videos. <laughs> I am, I'm officially done with this model unless there's some sort of major evolution uh, to the design. Uh, that's going to be pretty much it today. Like I said, you can find this and the uh, bajillion variants of it right down in the description. If you're new, this is a great... The, the base version, the Vanguard version of the Sheepdog is a great first nice knife, right? If you're somebody who is just now entering the knife world and you're like, what will set a good example for me? The Sheepdog. And look in the comment section of this video. There will be plenty of people talking about why this knife has been popular for so long and their experiences with it, right? So it's good to get your information from more than one source, obviously. So... Anyways, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at uh, metal underscore complex if you enjoyed this video. 
leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Middle Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.